Hello, brothers and sisters of UAW Local 1166. Uh, before we get into any questions, and I also have uh, Ron DeWeese, the uh, Secretary of Treasurer here, that's going to explain the uh, sub payback. Uh, just want to touch base on a few things. Uh, the intent is to have a union meeting on June the 13th. Again, June the 13th at 9 a.m. Uh, we'll probably have to practice social distancing, but uh, usually that's not the case when it comes to the union meeting because there's not that many that show up and we'd like to see the whole full to where we have to spread it out on the lawn would be nice. Um, touch base on the elections. The elections, we're going to have the nominations and elections for the election committee at the June meeting. Um, that flyer will be posted in the plan as soon as we get it and it will also be put out in the newsletter. Uh, the general elections, uh, the nominations and the elections will be held in July and again after those elections the, uh, the new New positions and new officers will take those uh, positions effective at the first union meeting in August. So if you have any questions on the election, to get with me again to June and July and the assumed position in August, and that's for the general elections. Um, I'd like to reiterate something I said, actually, a call in PAAs. So there's language on the call in PAAs uh, util utilization. If it's before or after a holiday, you cannot use a call in PAA. If it's before, a scheduled day before or after, you cannot use it before or after a layoff. So keep that in mind. If you're wanting to take the day off, and I already put that out, by the time you get this, it's already over. Um, just keep in mind, uh, you can't use a call in PAA for Tuesday if you're back in the plant working. It has to be pre approved by your boss. So again, if you have any questions on call in PAAs and there's other language that covers it, day after March Madness, those kind of things, Super Bowl, I mean, it goes all, all kinds of things where you can't use a call in PAA. So check with your steward prior to calling in a PAA if it's close to a holiday or some kind of a big event. Uh, one other thing I want to touch base on, what, do you, what to do once you answer yes on the questionnaire. So if you answer yes on a questionnaire, do not report to work. Medical will get in touch with you. Do not play phone tag. You need to be by your phone. So when medical calls, you have to answer that phone and she has questions that she will go through. And then you need to, you need to make sure you answer those honestly. Um, we don't want a situation where you're, you've checked an answer wrong when you're, maybe your temperature wasn't 100.4, it was 100.3 or whatever the case is. Answer it honestly. Medical will get a hold of you and they will direct you what to do after that. If you're fine to come back to work the next day, they will let you know that. But if it's something that they feel that you need to go get tested, and then you'll be sent out to get tested. So again, make sure you have, make sure you're by your phone if you do answer yes, because the medical department will get a hold of you. Uh, right now, I'd like to turn it over to Ron DeWeese and he'll go over the uh, sub -pay payback. Hello, brothers and sisters. Um... Your sub base is calculated based on 74% of a 40 hour check. Your sub payment is calculated taking your sub base minus any unemployment insurance compensation received for that week. So for week ending 4-4, April 4th, if your sub payment was calculated based on receiving unemployment compensation of 390 and the state retroactively paid you an additional $600 and unemployment compensation for that week, you will have to repay the sub that you received as your sub payment would have been calculated based on 390 instead of 990. The $600 will not be included on your W-2 as taxable income at the end of the year. Um, however, any taxes that were withheld, you will get credit for on your W-2 at the end of the year. So in other words, the tax withholdings at the end of the year, if you end up owing taxes, it'll decrease the taxes that you owe, or if you end up getting a refund, it will increase the taxable refund that you're going to receive um, for year ending 2020. Um, and how much you will have to repay. As far as payroll deduction of sub, the most that they can withhold currently is $100 per week. 
Um, the International Union is trying to negotiate a decrease to that um, down to $50 a week, but as of right now, um, the most that they can deduct of that $600 is $100 a week. Thank you. Okay, now we'll go ahead and get into the questions. Um, first question, well, actually Ron went over the first and second, so that would be the third. If we were canvassed but chose not to return to work, how do we answer the question about being offered work? If so, what do we use the reasoning for declining? So again, I think I brought this up in a, pre a previous video. If you're canvassed to come to work and you have the seniority to turn it down, you're not declining work because they're gonna have somebody in there to take your place. So technically, it goes by seniority, that's how the contract is. You say no, you just remain on layoff and it's, you file as usual. Um, it, it's different for when you're forced in there or you're scheduled to work. You, you have to return to work. If they call you up and leave a message, you have to return to work. Uh, the thing is, if people trying to avoid phone calls from, um, from the plant, you don't wanna get yourself in that situation because you did provide them an accurate phone number that phone number is what they utilize to stay in touch with the workforce. Once they call you on that phone number, they may leave a message. Once you call them back, if it's a volunteer status or if you're forced or scheduled, they will tell you that you have to report. It doesn't, it, it doesn't behoove you to say, I didn't get the call or whatever the case is. Because the next thing that they're going to do, if they can't get a hold of you, they're going to send you a five-day letter. So once you get a certified mail from the five-day letter from HR, that gives you specific instructions that you need to get a hold of HR to find out what the problem is. So again, you don't want to get the five day letter and you be out of town and then not answer the five day letter and you'll be terminated. And then we'll have to fight to try to get your job back. So it doesn't, it's really not worth it right now to do that. Um, if you need to go on vacation or you get called back to work, then we'll work the vacation out. Uh, but don't, don't avoid the phone call if it says that you are forced or scheduled to work. Uh, number four, if we were brought back on a different shift, we would be able to go back to our previous shift and area once everyone returns. I brought this up again as well, but once we get everybody back, it is the, the intent of the management and the union is to get everybody placed back to where they came from. Um, so if you were shipping on a second shift, you want to go back to that, you can go back to that, whatever the case is. Everybody should be able to return to the normal jobs that they had prior to this going on. Number five, when filing for unemployment, am I still laid off as a result of COVID-19? Yes. You still answer that yes. Number six, will they be deducting union dues out of our check for the months we were off once we are on active roll? Yes, they will be doing, if you come in next week, they're gonna take your first pay period, they'll take the union dues out, and then the first of the month, they'll take another set of union dues out. So that's how that works. Number seven, what will the new building be used for that they are building outside of gate eight? So right now, if anybody's drove through the parking lot, they've seen that the motorcycle parking area had a little configure that people had to squirrel through to try to get you know, into the turnstile, show their questionnaire. Uh, right now, that's all gonna be tore out and there's on the south side of gate seven and the north side of gate eight. They're gonna put two tents in, two structures in and they're gonna be enclosed. They're gonna be manned by security 24 seven. What they're gonna have in there is a thermal temperature. So when you go in, you stand there for a, maybe five seconds at the most, you get your temperature, you show your, your green check mark via your phone or through the questionnaire, and they allow you the entrance to the plant. If they check your temperature there and it's high, they're gonna send you out a different set of doors and you're gonna to go to your vehicle. And depending on what time it is, um, I have to clarify the off shifts, but on first shift, you're supposed to drive around to the medical department. But again, we'll get all that sorted out because every day something new comes up in there and I'm sure it's probably changed since I put this video out. But again, we will address that once we get to, by the beginning of next week, if something changes and then I'll put it out at the beginning of the week so it doesn't surprise anybody. Number eight, why am I forced back on first or second shift when there is lower seniority on thirds, my preferred shift? Okay, so we have people on active role right now. So when you get when you get Canvas to come back, let's say they need 60 people in department 1100. You find those 60, you identify those six, 60 people from the bottom and count up. The top person 
You start there to canvas the person what shift they want because they got to honor seniority. The seniority person has the right to go to whichever shift they prefer. As they go down, and most people may pick first shift, I'm just giving that example. As it goes down, those people have the choice of maybe picking first, second, or third, but as it gets lower and lower down to the top five, the bottom five may all be forced on second shift. But then again, once again, you're on active role. You go back into the plant, you have every right to exercise your seniority. If there's people volunteered that have less time than you, you can initiate a bump to get back to the shift where you want to go. Uh, if you have any questions on that, get a hold of uh, either Brian Cottingham or King C or myself and, uh, and we'll answer those. If they, number nine, if they canvass me and turn it down and they told me it was for five weeks and I take off for the beach, then they canvass the very next weekend. I don't call them because I'm at the beach and left my phone at home, what happens? Again, I brought that up. You don't wanna play games with it. Um, if they notify you that, if they canvass you and you have the seniority to turn it down, then you're fine. But if they canvass you and tell you that you are forced or scheduled to report to work, I left my phone at home, doesn't work. It's like my dog ate my homework. That stuff does not work in the business. You have to be honest with them. You provided them that phone number, that's why they called that phone number. So you've already established communication with the company that way. If there's something that come, comes up and you're out of town or something, you need to get a hold of the union official and let us work that out. Uh, but right now, if they do call you and scheduled and or forced, you need to beat feet and get back here. Or some other route, go to your boss and schedule a vacation or something. But again, don't play games with it. Give it to stewards and let the stewards, uh, let them address it if you have any problems. Number 10, for those of us returning Tuesday, will Monday be a paid holiday? Yes, you will be on active role as of Monday. Uh, you're only scheduled to work on Tuesday, so you will be paid for the holiday. Number 11, should we send our check, should we send a check and make it out and make them pay? Okay, I don't even know how to read that. Anyways, so we got a letter in the mail to pay back that sub pay. They want you to send a check, so my I recommend not sending the check in, although I've talked to some people that have already done it. The reason being, we know how they like to lose paperwork and stuff gets caught up on whatever, a pile of desks. I mean, this is going on with a lot of people in the corporation. If you send a check, they go ahead and, and cash that check, deposit or whatever the case is. It may slip through the cracks. The next thing you know, you come back, your first paycheck, they're deducting money out of it. So then you have to go fight them to get your money back. They're fighting to get theirs back. And I'm telling you, it's a lot harder to get your money back than it is for them to get their money back. So I be, it behooves you to allow them to go ahead and deduct it a week. You have one pay period, every pay period, the hundred dollars, or like Ron said, it may get down to 50. But whatever it is, let them deduct it. Let them, rec let them recoup their own money. It just makes no sense if you file a check and I know how that stuff works. Uh, the paper trail, so to speak, is easier to follow when they're deducted from your paycheck and not as easy if you send a check up there. So keep that in mind. If you have any more questions about that, you can you know, call the union hall, you can talk to Rod and I, and we'll address it. Number 12, I'm due for a raise. When, I, when should I expect that? So if you're on layoff and you're due for a pay, pay progressive um, raise, uh, as soon as you come back on active role, being we had some people that's due some, a pay raise, they came back on Monday, that new pay, pay raise, which they're entitled to, will take effect on next Monday, the following Monday. So if you go into your employment history, if you redo your pay raise while you were laid off, it goes the second Monday after you're back, go in there and check heist, and your pay raise should be on there. So it goes by 12 months. It doesn't go by, you have to make up any, any time, it's 12 months. So again, if you have any issues with that, next Monday and you go in there and you've already been back a week and it's your second week, again, reach out to the stewards because we need to get that addressed. Number 13, if they call me back and I'm out of town, am I allowed to remain layoff? Again, we, we touched base on that several times. If you're out of town and you're seniority wise and they canvass you, you can, you can turn down and say, no, I don't wanna go to work. I just soon to stay on layoff. But again, if they're scheduled to force, don't play games with it. You have to come to work. I mean, it behooves you to come to work. You don't want to get in that position where you're getting a five-day letter and you're out of town because you don't want to answer your phone. And if you're out of town, you're not going to get the five-day letter anyway, so they're going to sit on a couple days and they're going to send it back. 
not deliverable, and then you're going to be terminated. And then when you come to get, come back to work, your badge ain't going to work. Then we're going to have to get all through this fight trying to get you reinstated. So again, don't play games with it. Um, and also, if, if you get into the facility, um, when you go through the turnstile, make sure you have your PPE on, your mask, your protective, your mask, and your safety glasses. Go through the turnstile. If you're drinking a cup of coffee, sipping on a soda or whatever the case is, don't leave your mask down where you're walking through. It's be, it just it doesn't take that long. Put your safety glasses on, get your mask put on, and walk through the turnstile. Once you get to the other side, put your mask down, take a drink, put your mask back on. Again, I'll reiterate, when you go in the break rooms, you don't have to have, when you sit down to eat lunch, you don't have to have your mask on. Uh, so keep that in mind. It's not where we had an instance earlier this week, allegedly one of the management told somebody that when you're eating lunch, you take a bite, put your mask back on, they take another bite, mask down, put it back on. And that's just stupid when you have to keep touching your mask, keep touching your mask. Keep. But that was addressed and I, hopefully that fire was put out. Uh, again, I can reiterate that you got to answer the questions on the questionnaire. Be honest about it. If your temperature is 100.3, that's not 100.4. Answer no. Use common sense. If you have questions, reach out to the union. Don't reach out to management. Reach out to the union. Because all you're doing is, if you're calling management saying, hey, I'm at, in Ohio fishing, well, you've already given them a red flag here in Ohio, and they're going to play, try to play games and, you know, keep you out or whatever the case may be. I would rather you get to the hold of the elected officials and let the elected officials tell you what to do. It's easier for us, we're in there all the time, to go and have these conversations without everybody in the Brotherhood knowing what's going on. So again, if you're if you fall in that situation, get a hold of us and let us go address it. Um, getting towards the tail end of it, I just want to touch base on on a couple things. So there's a lot of stuff that goes on on social media, a lot of stuff on Facebook. I mean, I don't I don't have Facebook because I would never have anything else. I'd spend so much time answering questions, doing all that on there. The Facebook is not to go in there and bash and do all that stuff. It's to learn stuff. So if you get the standing committees, all the standing committee chairs and their committees that run social media, those are on there to you answer questions. They're, they're there to inform and educate the people. I mean, that, that's just what they do. Um, I can't get the word out to everybody without, again, and I appreciate Hannah for pointing this video out, uh, as well as Ron. You need to, the best way to get, to get involved with the standing committees Learn about what the Education Committee does, the Community Service and Women's Committee, and all those committees, what they, what they do. They help inform, instruct, and educate the membership. That's what those standing committees are for. They do a lot of good things. I suggest you get involved in that and educate yourself. It only helps you when you educate yourself. You have a ton of knowledge that you can share with other people on the floor. That's, what that, that's the way that's supposed to work. There's a member-to-member -member thing that was going on that Dwayne Wyatt was working on when all this stuff happened. And it doesn't mean that we're not going to get back to it and do it. Um, it's like a pyramid thing where the members, remember, you get the top guy and then two and then four and then on down the line. But it's best to get involved into the standing committee where you get educated. You go educate other people, which makes you feel good because you have all that knowledge. When you have a lot of knowledge, a lot of people like to share it. There's no, there's no reason to learn something and keep it within your, you know, within your own little world there. You need to share that knowledge with people. I mean, it's a good thing to get into the standing committees. There's a lot of stuff they do in the community. There's a lot of stuff they do within the plant. There's a lot of stuff they do in the union hall. You get educated. I mean, you have the opportunity, and hopefully Black Lake will open back up. You have the, you know, the opportunity to go there or go to Region 2B in Ohio to learn more. And I know Dwayne stepped up and done a lot of things for the education committee, and he's going to a lot of, he's got something coming up in Region, some virtual learning thing that he's got to go through. But stuff like that, it's going to, I think it's going to get easier to where they're doing more stuff online instead of putting everybody in a situation where they got to be crowded around a lot of people. And Black Lake is one of those things where you're crowded around a lot of people. But again, if you have any questions on the standing committees, I will go through every standing committee. We have, I think, three, maybe four standing committees right now that have no chair. So again, I'll be posting those for it to fill those positions. Uh, we need chairs, the union label, consumer affairs, 
and off the top of my head, I can't think of the other ones, but those people to get involved so we can help educate people. That's what the union is supposed to do. And if you think that the union is bad, then shame on you, because if you look at outside in the world, look what the union has done for you since this COVID coronavirus has taken effect. Look at the pay you're receiving, negotiated the sub pay. Even though you have to pay back that one or two, don't get bent out of shape on that. If it wasn't for the $600, you would, see, you would still be receiving your sub pay. So whatever the UAW is doing, whatever your local leadership is doing, when you go into the plant, you'll be able to see those things that we have put in place. And again, our skilled trades have been busting their butt in there, trying to make everything safe for everybody. So uh, to me, you should actually, some people don't think it, but you should be thinking that you're part of a union. Um, the union is strong and, it, and it's all about solidarity. We got to do this together. So again, real quick, if you want to join a standing committee or learn anything about it, get with me. I will share the information with you and we'll get you involved. And for those who's coming back next week, I look forward to seeing you guys back next week. Um, if you have any questions when you get back, get with me or the committeemen or the steward and those people who remain on layoff, enjoy the warm weather that's coming up and also uh, enjoy Mother's Day. And again, or excuse me, not Mother's Day, Memorial Day. This is all about those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. So keep our brothers and sisters that served in the military in your thoughts and prayers. And again, have a good weekend and I'll catch you on the flip.